If you want to enjoy watching somebody else take on two or more bolt projects all at once without having to endure the sheer joy and pain of actually doing it yourself, these upcoming videos are definitely for you. Robbie and I were floating over an abyss. Our plans to go to a new boat on the other side of the planet had dissipated. We were waiting at the edge of someone else's decision, waiting to free fall into whatever opportunity we could muster. It looked like we might have a small multi-hulled vessel named this Esperado. It was a torment not knowing what we would have at the end of the wait though. But then the good news finally came that we would indeed be taking on Desesperado, the hand-built 22-foot Pacific flying prow that would need a good home when our friend who built it would eventually leave Mexico. The bad news in the meantime was that the MacBook Air that enables me to bring these videos to you all decided to abruptly bite the dust. I ordered the special screwdrivers required to open up Apple hardware and cracked her open as this was a non-warrantied second-hand machine. On the motherboard, the attachment point to the batteries can sometimes have issues. I used the method described in several YouTube videos to test out whether I could just get power running again to the fan by unplugging and replugging the batteries, but the fan would only temporarily gain power. This was all I would be able to do with the materials at hand. I brought the computer to a specialist friend of a friend who bathed the circuit board in a special cleaning liquid, and he discovered that salty air had corroded a high percentage of the circuits on the board. So essentially, another computer was toast. I started looking for another computer without an internal fan that would suck salty air into the case. Hopefully this could be one way to avoid the same failure in the future. And we made a new addition to our crew by officially adopting the young dog that came to visit our parents' workshop for food. We call him Choco, as in Chocolate, because he is all shades of brown. Come on, Robbie's coming too. And he melts all our hearts. We get those ticks off of you. They don't to me. They don't float. I took a tick off of him this morning and threw it in the water and it sank. We got him vaccinations and pills to treat parasites, and started letting him follow us to the boat. We also had to introduce him to the ocean. This street dog had never swum before. He's a good boy. Island, a deal was also in the works, meanwhile, to not only get the prow, Desesperado, but also its entire sailboat companion named Inesperado. Part of the deal was that we would have to repair her huge Genoa if we wanted to bring the boat from Isla Mujeres to Puerto Aventuras. Thanks to Tony, we had just the right machine and space to patch that big sail up. We sewed both sides of the luff, leech, and foot, and somehow without it looking too much like Frankensail's monster. We hauled the sail back into the colectivos, past the groovy murals in Cancun, and back to Isla Mujeres to stand up upon what we could finally call our new vessel. Our friend gave us some final pointers on how to sail the prow, and when he was off, we packed up Desesperado onto Inesperado's deck. Before the sun was up, we optimistically set sail south from the island. We sped around the corner of Cancun's hotel zone and then rammed into a solid brick wall of current. That is the Gulf Stream picking up speed around the island of Cozumel. At noon, we started to notice that reference points on land were remaining in place. Our only functioning navigation electronics, our tablet and iPhone, gave us speeds of about 1.5 knots over ground. When we turned the engine on, 
It made a strange knocking sound and the revs were fluctuating. I tried to take a peek at the prop with the GoPro, but without a longer pull, I really couldn't make out anything conclusive. So we vowed to only use the engine again when approaching the canal entrance, which made our quick 50 nautical mile trip turn into a 30 hour overnight passage. But we made it without drama. Got the engine started again with the new battery that we picked up for the purpose of just in case. Inesperado had arrived in a beautiful spot in the canal in front of somebody's property along the water that Celine had arranged for us. Our current boat project is now a Venikins Coral 40, built in Belgium in the late 80s or early 90s. A fiberglass, balsa cord deck, furling mainsail, and all the usual leaky spots. So we jumped right into things. A shakedown voyage is a good way to learn about a boat, and ripping everything apart is also a good way to get to know her. We found some interesting non-functioning devices in the bilge. We have the high pressure pump and the, and the control board. It's missing the membranes and what a mess. As well as a hidden safe. Ravi wants to get straight into it. You just want to get into the vault. Not even going to like look for the key anymore. Trying to take just the whole thing out. Yeah. liquid whatever it is mm. nothing it's just wet what the hell is that stuff this was the locking mechanism gross disappointing mm -hmm. nice to find a big wad of cash in there but oh it would have been like all mush well it could just be liquid cash what you're seeing there nice the bilge cleanup continued because what if we found something else interesting down there? We opened up every nook and cranny and tackled the gimbaled stove because we could smell gas coming from it when the knobs were turned off. Well, it ends up that after cleaning the entire stove, most of the key components had been corroded to the point of leaking and being unsafe. Time for a walk through the whole boat to look at just some of the work she'll need. The, all of her, the bearings have to be serviced. This piece has to be straightened out. Forward of that is the nav light. Those have to be rewired. We took all the chain out. Robbie did his best to clean the anchor locker here with some OSFO and yeah. some anti-rust. I've got the anchor locker lid under the grinder and sander right now. Windless works fine. It does move a little bit when uh, there's a little strain on it. it. means we probably have to reinforce the, the bottom of it with some wood and epoxy. Your big pet peeve is this window. It opens forward, it should open the other way. <laughs> Anything to say about this hatch? Yeah, I would like to have it a little bigger. But that's just a pipe dream. We resend the mass and we paint eventually. Everything looks nice and solid. In the hierarchy of needs, where do you place this anti-skid, anti-slip. Probably last. These aren't leaking, surprisingly. The windows are leaking a little bit. As usual. <laughs> Massive pilot house windows that I'd like to shrink down someday. Careful, get out of the way. One thing about it, what's your professional opinion about the rigging? It has to be chained from top to bottom, especially the lowers first, which are right now chained and some weird rusty clips. It's complicated to get rigging to Mexico. How are we going to get the stuff here? When we change the lifelines on Rosa and put the Dyneema ones, we really like them. So I think I'm going to do the same thing again. We're probably going to have to put some netting because of this guy. First thing I noticed when steering this boat was that I absolutely despise the steering. Hydraulic steering has its advantages, but also its drawbacks as I started to figure out. I don't know, people viewing this, what do you think about steering? Hydraulic steering, turning hydraulic steering into cable steering. 
or tiller steering. Or that's the emergency tiller. Taking our emergency tiller and installing it permanently. This throttle has to be replaced. Sanding and varnishing of outdoor teak. Solar panels are functioning but are in dire need of some work. The aft cabin is already a disaster. The saloon berth has been removed and we're going to have to rebuild it. I want to build a, a double bed and some shoving even on top. There goes the varnish on the boat. The engine is a subject. <laughs> no, talk about the engine. It gives me nightmares and it seems to be losing oil here and there. Uh, it doesn't, it's really hard to start. There's definitely air getting in the fuel somewhere. The wine for it is a complete disaster. Uh, some things are not bad about it, but when looking for insulation, there wasn't any. We just took off the lining and the wiring. A clean epoxy and paint. It's our favorite mantra, right? just in clean epoxy paint. This needs to be made into another bed slash sofa. I took apart the Force 10, which sounds great with the name, but um, apparently it was underwater and it's not a functioning. Uh, it's it not was functioning to a point which, which was actually kind of dangerous. Yeah, we could smell gas a little bit every time we turned it on. We looked at ordering new components, but these parts would add up to being a significant cost compared to getting a whole new marine stove, especially when counting the cost of shipping things to Mexico. Now we've got a, a $15 temporary fix. We can cook we can boil water on the boat right now the plumbing is high on my list of priorities it currently uses an electric pump which if left on puts pressure on the leaky faucets and causes countertops to become soggy and blister i prefer manual foot pumps all else seems barbaric to me i, tr I tried to take off as much of the, the peeling white stuff as possible like you see wires are hanging all over the place we removed the, the top lining and now we're going to have to scrape sand and paint, but also we have to rerun all the wirings from the mast back to the new, to the electrical panels. But as you go forward on the inside, less problems. This, I think we found some rock right in that place. Oof. Okay. This windows leaks and this floorboard took a hit. Basically we cut it in a straight line and just replaced the piece that's rotten. We had six inches of memory foam in Rosa and now we have no inches of original <laughs> we need new foam i like to remove things like these ac power plugs your voltage and amperage is higher you just have a higher cause of fire and i believe all, all ac matter should be centralized on the boat less wire less fire hazard you only have two two pieces of wire instead of it sneaking through your boat any rat anything something you know crushes a wire and you get a fire and lastly, but not least, under the water line needs to be assessed. Whenever we can afford a haul out, we need to figure out which through holes are worthy and which ones are not. Remove all the electronics and tackle all the remaining aesthetics. Easy, right?